Still trying to throw the ball on first and goal, second and goal. Panicking at third. Fourth, I'm wishing for a month. Welcome to the 510 Huddle. This is your coach, D Lane. I'm here with my host, Isaiah Walters. He's feeling a little below the weather right now, but he's definitely in the building. We're here with three unique stories, three good friends of ours, former athletes. Um, we got Yusef Sterling Lowe, yeah, Mr. Saying? Jamal Mayo in the yeah, building, how doing? and then my guy, JJ Tillman. What's good? What's good? You know, I'm here. I'm a little under the weather, but you know, I'm grinding good, it out. You through, bro. I'm, I'm happy I got my boys here, you know, uh, about to talk. They all got unique stories that I feel like good to share from the football perspective, all from Oakland. Before we get started, it's been a long debate on the pod. We've talked Man, about been hearing episode it. one. Now, I've been having all these disrespectful East Bay Warriors come in my home talking crazy. Crazy. EBW, come so on, man. Yeah, yeah, y'all that. You live with somebody. Oh, man. I don't live with him. He stay here. Yeah, 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 you know. But we got my boy Seth in here, Crusader. And, man, I, really and hater, my boy man. JJ, Crusader. I mean, Predator of Prey. Exactly. So, I think for once in a while, we can... In the debate that Crusaders is better than East Bay. All right, we can move on now. Hold on, I just find, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can go. We we go. We I just find, I just find it we funny how they want to always spearhead that conversation when he outnumber a brother. You feel me? When when he got the numbers, I've been you outnumbered know, every time. Nah, nah. Last time it was you and Kill picking on me. That that was last time. But before that, who right, we had? Kill. We had Von. Von. That's, that's it. Talking. That's it. No, we had. No, who we else? had somebody else, bro. No, we did. Who we was just it? so did. At the end of the day. The it don't matter. The Let them know, Mayo. Crusaders, Crusaders, May you feel me, build hitters. No matter what, Mayo brought it. it. I mean, that's <laughs> you. I hate more. I play for the Warriors, so. Look, this is all. All right, Seth and JJ, can y'all please say why our league was better? Because we had cuts, bro. Like, yes. we had cuts. We had cuts. We had cuts. We had No. We did, but we, you know. But they got six players and they was out. We had six players, too. We had six players. I was a six play player. He was a six play player. Yo, last year, you said last year, but Seth, Seth won the MVP Pee Wees. Uh, Jerry Pee Wees. Jerry Pee Wees, yeah, don't say so. He just played up with us. Yeah, 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 I played with the older people. You feel me? Uh, you know, I was the older lighter. I was the older lighter. Yeah, you know, I was a fat boy. I was a I was a fat boy. No, I used to have to wear the, uh, y'all, you used to have to wear the garbage bag in practice. No, no, I was a fat boy. Me and Zay, Zay, but so did I. You know why I played with the older people? Because I was always a hitter. I was always the hardest hitter on my team. I was always the best. You feel me? So they moved me up and stuff. Like he, he not lying. He not lying. Okay, okay. Honcho, honcho. He's a big honcho. No, for real. Okay. I'm playing quarterback. So hey, right. I'm gonna tell y'all like this a quick story on Seth, man. Since we since we here, and I think I already addressed it on Twitter, man. This dude right here, the only player I ever known that in, damn near cussed out cussed out the whole team, damn near the whole coaching staff, threw his helmet in the middle of condo. Yo, yo, when it's say not f right. this shit. What Come is, back and serve the next game. Because, I'm like, hold on, bro. And, and, hold on, I'm Seth. Gonna, I'm going to piggyback off, off that. And then, Seth, I want you to comment. But he's been doing that since Crusaders. <laughs> he was getting a fight down there every game. Uh, it was always it. like, bro, he would get, bro, damn near a fight. Like, you got to get Sterling. There it goes, Sterling, to get. Because I was always the littlest, man. Everybody yeah. used to pick on me for some reason. Like I said, I used to play with the little people. We were losing the time he came in there and spazzed. He was spazzing on the time. Man, with this football stuff, man, if it, if it's not right to me, man, it's not right. Man, I gotta address it. You see what I'm saying? So I'm gonna address. You know, Delane, uh, what Delane said about me, I cussed out the whole team and the club coaches because during this, during like we was practicing, everybody wasn't going hard and everything like that. You feel me? So when so when it was time to go, when it was time to run and stuff like that, everybody gave like thousand percent, like you know, just hard ass. You feel me? And it's like it was kind of disrespectful to to me, to the to, to the team, to the to everybody. You feel me? If you go bust your ass through sprints, why not bust your ass through practice? You feel me? So that's how I felt. Nobody was addressing it, so I addressed it for everybody. And uh, you know, it came out kind of. You know, I smashed on everybody, big huh? So you, 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 you feel me? Stop playing with me. Seth, we kind of heard your motivation out there as far as you know being undersized. You like put that chip. What, what type of motivation you got when you out there on that field more when you was playing? What, what drives you? And what Honestly, makes you? It, it, it was just like, you know, I got to be felt on the field. They going to feel me no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No matter who we playing, mm -hmm. no matter what, what state we in, mm -hmm. city, no matter what. I come from Oakland, California, so. Straight up. Hey, I rep my city to the fullest, so you already know what it is when I'm on the field. Every, Every time. time. Impact, regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. All, all yeah. times. And, JJ, I know you got to, you know, 
you kind of the opposite of Seth Forrest, the mouthpiece part. But you, I feel like y'all definitely bring it. You feel me? So JJ, what do you think? Silent like, killer. What What is your like? What is your motivation? What's going through your head when you're on the field? Um, I just like. I mean, honestly, I do my. I like to do my job and, and like help my teammates just do better. Like we we gotta do the right things and stay focused. You know I got too many <laughs> stories with that cat. I'm gonna say them for later. Oh, yeah, Tilly nah. for sure, the silent assassin. That boy. Yeah. Bring I got that wood, boy. Man, I got a quick story on JJ. I'll never forget this. Um, so, JJ, we play, I think, like, this is like, you know, during midget, we play like Livermore. He show up at halftime. I'm like, bro, where you been at? He's like, my mom's had to finish my clothes. <laughs> had to wash his clothes. Was, I was playing with JJ. So, JJ, at the time, he playing corner. He came in right away. Broken nigga wrist, bro. Like, first play. Like, he was doing laundry on a Saturday. Came in and, and broke their best player wrist. And so that's why I was just like, yeah, there's, there's something wrong with him, bro. Like, that's why I first thought, like, he's too quiet to I be do, doing I, this to I, people. I, one <laughs> thing about J.J., when I, like, growing up with J.J. and stuff, like, you play on the same team. One thing I, like, I respect and notice about J.J., he was bluder than me. But bring it to anybody, though. Mm, he didn't bro. care who you was. Like, that's why, that's why I mess with these two right here, you feel me? Because we don't care who you are. We don't care how, how big your name is. We go come, we go bring it to you every time, you feel me? And that's why I respect about these two, you yeah. feel me? I, I've mama. always been on the stars as well, like Seth said. I just started to get like bigger and stuff, so that was another thing that drove me as well. Just being undersized, ha- gotta having a chip on my side, on my shoulder. We always so joke. I got to play with the big Tilly. Yeah, 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 basically. I mean, yeah. big Tilly was bringing that wood. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Quick story on Tilly, man, because Tilly was my roommate in college. We was a. Uh, we had our homegirl, Miss P. She used to come cook or whatever. Her brother played uh, for Nickel Ms. State. Okay. Yeah, Miss P, the homie. I was on the phone with her earlier. Uh, but uh, her brother played for Nickels, and uh, we played Nickels that week. A couple of days before the game. She come and tell JJ, hey, her brother started running back. Do not hurt my brother, JJ. Those are her words. I'm like, all right, he can't make no promises. <laughs> JJ out there, ain't, he ain't going to make no promises. So I think it's literally, it's for sure in the first half. It might have been the first drive. This fool come down the alley. You see Tilly meet him on the sideline. And just blow breath shit up. I'm talking about where he smacked him so hard. Brother damn near like dropped to his knees, fell back until he wobbled out of bounds. <laughs> shut him in. I think he had to shut still. Huh? Yeah. He had to come out because you know everything yeah. came off. So nigga, I, he had to come out, bro. <laughs> Chin strap, everything was off. I'm like, Till, you just, why you just leave that dead body on the field like that? Man. Why you do that, boy? Like everybody that? Got, a, got a JJ hit story from him. Man, I see got him, I seen Crusaders. I mean, I seen high school, 5'5. Five, five. Muscle fools for picks. When he got his, I mean, uh, I think my favorite hit in college I saw uh, when I watched y'all play Oklahoma State. Killed that boy uh, Washington, the receiver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Played for Steelers now. Steelers, yeah, yeah, I was like, man, everyone got a hit story for, uh, for, for JJ, sure. for Shirley. But I want to start uh, with Seth real quick. Right. And I want you to uh, talk to us about your first memory playing football and, and bring us up to where you at today. Man, first memory playing football. All and, right. and your journey. I want to hear your journey. Um... First moment playing football, man, playing outside with my big cousin and stuff like that, you feel me? That's why I really got the edge to, like, you know, like I said, I don't care who you is. That's what me playing with my big cousin. They was all teenagers. I was like a kid, you feel me? And they was treating me no different than them, you feel me? Throwing me on the concrete, you feel me? Really throw up, tackle, you feel me? So that's where it built up. Then I went to Crusaders, played Crusaders. Uh, always the littles on the team. Like I said, we had six play players. I was always the six play player. Like, it was like probably like one year out of my six year playing Crusaders that I was. Not a six-play player, and that was the year I won MVP. That's when I played my own age group and stuff like that. But like, but like being a six-play player, most, most of my uh, most of my pop Warner really gave me that edge too. Also, uh, to be like, I want to be the best player on my team every time I step on the field. You feel me? So I don't want to. I don't want to feel like. Uh, 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 they not put me in. They not put me in. I'm not gonna complain about this. It. All on me. So you feel me? So when they went to high school, you know, that, I was really blessed. I was really blessed. I was really blessed to really go to McClymans. You know, I was, at first I was gonna go to San Leandro, then I went to McClymans. You know, when I went to McClymans, it was like, like I said, uh, when I was there, I was a freshman. Marcus Peters was a junior. Wendell was a junior. Like we had, I had really had like big, like you feel me, big name dudes when I went to uh, Mac. But they at this time they didn't know they was big name dudes yet. You feel me? So. When I seen when I went over there, they was grinding, like grinding, like real life grinding. You feel me? So it gave me, so I just piggyback off them. And I just piggyback off them. When I was in high school, um, I did okay. Um, I feel like I wasn't like at my peak potential yet. Um, um, like I got all the accolades and stuff like that. First team All State, uh, second team All East Bay. Um, I really wasn't getting highly recruited uh, because I was like I said I was too little. Uh, like. I, 
I always joke with Jada about this. Like, I feel like we hit puberty hit the late in our 20s or something. Like that. <laughs> 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 uh, so, so uh, yeah, so, like I said, I didn't get recruited. Um, I remember one story. I had uh, Marcus, uh, not Marcus Peter, but his dad, Michael Peter, he, uh, was shopping my film to, like, uh, scouts and stuff like that. Um, Utah came all the way from Utah for me, just for me that day, you know. It was like, it, was a, it wasn't, a, it was like a regular day, so I ain't had no, like, I ain't had no football stuff on. I had like all streets clothes. He came, I went in the office, he shook my hand, he just looked at me for like two seconds, shook my hand, gave me a little pat on the back, like a little slave mm-hmm. measurement, you feel me, to see if I got any muscles. Working he, didn't with see, he didn't see none of that. He said, okay, I'll I, I, I talk to you later, for like two minutes. I said, I, I never want to feel like that again. And then Marky, like I said, Marcus Peters dad, uh, Michael Peters, man, he was a big influence on me, you feel me, so, uh, he used to tell, he used to be straight up with me, like, man, Seth, man, you know, in the weight room, you know, on the field, you ain't gonna be shit. Like, you ain't gonna be shit. Like, you should might as well, you feel me, not even play no more. Woo woo. So, after my senior year, like, I was getting recruited. I was on the field every day, trying to kill myself. Every day, you feel me? Like, to all y'all young people out there, man, if y'all trying to really make it, you gotta be in that lab every day. So, when I was in that lab, and when I was in that lab every day, um, I got to the uh, conclusion that I was going to Laney, uh, but. What got me that influence to go to Laney uh, was this man to my left of me, uh, Jamal Mayo. Uh, I remember I was at the 72, uh, at the 72 bus stop in West Oakland, San, uh, San Pablo, on Twitter. Jamal just got his offer from Missouri at the corner. I said, hell no. Nah. He ain't better than me. You feel me? I've been knowing Jamal since you feel me since he was younger. So I'm like, he never, he never played defense. So when I seen he got that offer, I said, oh, yes, up. It's up from right here, you see me? Well, I gotta, get this, I gotta get this what? I gotta get this everybody getting this money then after around that time, you know, Marcus Peters was uh, was at uh Washington doing his thing, he about to get drafted first round, so I'm like, so we about to go to Marcus to Jamal, then it's probably me next. You feel me? I don't care, like you feel me? So I went up to uh Laney, you know, uh I remember the first time first conversation I had with uh Jamal, like you feel me, it wasn't no it wasn't no like big ups until I told him straight up, bro, I'm better than you. I'm about to come here really you feel me about to really do it and he respected that it wasn't no beef or nothing like that he respected that we like you feel me became best friends after that you feel me on some shit then um like i said when i was at laney uh did my thing at laney you know got hella uh like i uh, like i said i hit puberty late so i'm getting bigger i'm getting I'm doing my thing on the field and stuff like that but the only thing about me uh, i had a lot of school uh, a lot of school distractions and stuff like that so I had, man, y'all, y'all, y'all kids, man, y'all Twitter kids think y'all doing some of all these offers and stuff, man. We had scouts lined up. We had to really make a time from, man, come from 10 to 11.30, man. It's too many pieces, too many yards. But, like, like I said, though, man, I got too, uh, too big of myself, thinking I was uh, above the team, not doing the schoolwork, uh, cutting off, like, you know, just doing what, just. What would, you say, what would you say the JUCO kids are? Kids struggling with grades right now. How, how how can they how can they get folks on school for if it's never you know you yeah. know like for a lot of kids that go JUCO right school is usually the main issue. Yeah yeah how, yeah. How would you tell them like how do you turn that school that switch on for school? Man, if you want that check, man, don't waste your time man, at JUCO. Man, that's what I feel like I messed up at. Man, wasting my time at JUCO. Like like I did my two years, then I had to stay at JUCO for another year because of my grades. You feel me? Everybody still wanted me, like you feel me. SEC wanted me. Texas A&M, uh, man, Washington, man, Cal, man. I remember one time I went, cr- man. I will tell you another story. One time I went crazy, man. I went crazy. This one game had like two pigs, had like five breakups, had hella tackles, whatever. Did my thing, whatever. Was that against us? Yeah, yeah, it was. Like, it was. It was. It was. It was against y'all. It was against y'all. It was I was going no, went, crazy. Y'all by us. I'm like, it's not like you like, feel like, me. But hey, hey, yeah, that y'all did win. But uh, the next day, Cal called, Cal called Bean, man, begging, like, we need you, Seth Thurman, we need him, we need him, like, right now. Bean really told him straight up, he was not surviving y'all academics, uh, y'all academics. It just killed me, you feel me? So, like, that, that kind of killed me, you feel me? Did it hurt your confidence in school, or did it? Did it did, it, it did. Okay. It really did hurt my confidence in my school, like, you feel me? It was just like, um, fuck it, you know, like like how every other Juco kid that had talent that had all the scouts and shit like that was just like, fuck it, fuck it, you feel me? But uh, the thing about me, you know, man, I come from a single home, so you feel me? I I gotta get up out of here, bro. I don't give a fuck what's going on to go on now, you feel me? So I just kept going, I just kept going with some help, man. I, I got my classes, but unfortunately, I ain't go D1, I went D2. Um, we went to Texas A&M Commerce. Um, it, was, it was a culture shock, I ain't gonna lie to you, from coming from Oakland, California, 
to Commerce, Texas. I'm not in Dallas or Houston. I'm in Commerce. You feel me? <laughs> the, man, boy, the countryside. So, so it was cool. Though. It was chill. Though. It was cool. It was, uh, like I said, to anybody that's out there, man, just get out. Just get out. Just get out of Oakland. Just get out of your own habitat. You feel me? Um, when I went out there, did my thing. Did my thing, you know. But the only thing is my speed. Like, um, I got All-American in Texas and in Commerce. I led my team to a national championship. Uh our scouts coming every day, not 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 college scouts, NFL yeah, scouts every yeah. day. You feel me? Like really, the thing is, well, when I went to Commerce, I didn't care if I was at DB two. You feel me? I'm gonna make every scout come to me, like that, and that's what I did. Like I made sure, you know, I did I did my thing on the field, um, and I at the same time I was still having trouble with school, but uh, with this with the help of my coaches, uh, my friends in here, uh, I got through it. I was pushing through. Um, then it was time for me to go pro. I went pro. Um, I went pro, and then um, and that's about it. And now I'm coaching, uh, mentoring. Uh, I'm trying to do just occupy myself. That's about it. No, I mean I think that was. I mean I, I like the story you said. I mean I, I could tell I went down there to visit you at Commerce. I mean I've been I've been in Texas before, like I've been to Houston. So <laughs> well, I, I mean yeah, I remember. Pulling up in that rental car, I'm like, "This where you stay, bro?" Yeah. And JJ was there too. In the yeah. trap, yeah. 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 JJ as a roommate, yo. JJ now, for, for y'all that don't know, if y'all ever watched like just a basic video, a vi music video, y'all got like, you see, they put the trap in it. That's what. That's where I live. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. That's, what, yeah. that's what it looked like. And that's what I treated. That's why I treated the commerce like you feel me. Even though you feel me, I treated commerce like it was the trap. Like you feel me, like I was like you feel me doing whatever, whatever. I just treated like man, I'm grinding every day. Yeah. To, to, to for a purpose, you feel me? And that's what it was to go to the NFL. I went to the NFL, got a little tryout with the Cardinals and stuff like that. Didn't work out. Um, and like I said, I'm coaching. Do you, sure. do you feel like it was a blessing in disguise to go to Commerce? Because, you know, let, let's say, I know, uh, I think I was in the car with you when you got a call from Texas A&M. And um, do you think it was like, you know, you became a national championship. Not too many people get to say that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And y'all like, a, I mean, I watched y'all. It was a magical season. He was around a lot of talent from the QBs man, and everything. Man, talent, man. Them, them boys out there in commerce, bro, that was like, man, I love them boys. But I ain't gonna lie, they really accepted my culture. They really accepted me, man. Like, like I ain't, because, like, there's a lot of people that come from out of state. They don't accept and stuff like that. You see, they don't mess with their own car and stuff. And the fact that, like, I went out there, I wasn't on no cocky shit because I'm from, you feel me, a better place than them. You feel me on some shit? Like, you feel yeah. me? I embrace their culture and shit like that. Uh, they really mess with me, you feel me? And... Crazy part, I started, I kind of, I always <laughs> praise myself, I kind of started uh, like a fraternity out there called the Mob, you feel me? They still like, you know, we had a little DB thing and stuff oh, like that. Busy. And you feel me? Uh, um, and we won a national championship up there, you feel me? My, my man JJ could uh, tell all that, you feel yeah. me? So, we was, yeah. and, and like, for like the perks to go into commerce, then going to D1, I ain't mean, gonna lie, um, I wasn't getting a lot of exposure for the media and stuff like that. If I feel like if I would've got, went D1 and did half of the shit I did at a D2, I would have been got kicked out. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was been. It was a lot of. Yeah, definitely. There's some uh, stories that can't be told. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We yeah. like to keep the five one zero huddle all the insight. But y'all can't know everything. <laughs> we trying to give y'all yeah. everything. We can't yeah. give y'all yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying, yeah. we're trying our best though. Y'all, y'all welcome to come through. We can talk football. We can talk there. off, off air, yeah. off air. But I wanna, uh, I wanna get to Jamal, man. Uh, I know you, you had a, a similar uh, football journey. I, I just wanna hear about you and how everything started. And uh, what, what got you first started playing football? Uh, you know, just growing up playing street football. Uh, uh -huh. Being one of the fastest kids out there, you know, people always tell me, you should play football, you should play football. You know, uh, at the age of eight, I asked my mother if I could play football. She first said no, you know. I had my uncle uh, beg her, you know, because my, my father wasn't around, so my uncle ended up encouraging her to let me play. And I'll never forget my first time making contact. I knew I was mentally crazy. Mm -hmm. I said, I love it, you know. Mm -hmm. And from there... You know, I was doing my thing. I grew up playing quarterback most of my life. Uh, throughout Pop Warner, got to Skyline High School, started quarterbacks as a freshman to senior year. Uh, going into my senior year, I told my coach that I didn't want to play quarterback no more because I was getting recruited as an athlete, and I didn't, honestly didn't know what I was playing in college. So I had a conversation with my coach, like, you know, Coach, I don't think I want to play uh, quarterback going into my senior year. And uh, this was his response. He said, you know what? Listen here, motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what you want to play. You're going to play what I want you to play. Sound like OEL coach. So it sound like an OEL coach. Sound like straight, straight out of Oakland. <laughs> so I'm like, damn. So I pretty much was forced to play quarterback. And I, I, I did my thing, you know, first team this, first team that. Then, uh, you know, throw recruiting. I was the only one on my team getting recruited. I was the face of Skyline. Uh, 
Cobb, so. The only thing that slowed me down was was SAT scores. That was a, a big, a big, that was big on me. You know, I, I started late. Though. I started as a junior, which I should have started as a sophomore. You know, I didn't know though. I didn't have, you know, father around to, to help me to push me or anything like that. So I took the Juco route. I didn't know where I was going to go. It was out of DVC, CSM, or Laney. You know, uh, I didn't want to, I didn't feel like driving every day. So I'm like, you know, I might as well just stay home, stay local. First day I practice, burn. Burnt toast. <laughs> I was just so confused on like just getting adjusted to playing corner. It was just like, real, honestly, real quick, Ma. What was uh so like was he one of those dudes like damn? Look at that back pedal. Look at that. Like it was just like every, that just, type. Just just like everything from disgusting. The technique, and it was just like I'm watching film on myself. Like damn, bro, I've never seen myself look this bad on film. And I was fourth string. I'm just like damn, bro. This shit is so hard. And I was so like hard on myself. So after practice, I'm going to the beach every day. Every day going to my freshman year. And first scrimmage, you know, had a pick. You know, I'm locking our best receiver down. And from there, I was a starter. And uh, and I was blessed to receive five picks my freshman year. Took receive one to the, or go get them? Oh, no, I went to go get them. <laughs> every, every pick, I went to go get them. Uh, what, five picks, eight pass breakups, probably like 30 tackles as a freshman. Uh, I, I earned all state, first team. First team all conference, and I was the MVP of the bowl game. Also, I was the MVP of the defense that year as well. Uh, you were the MVP of the bowl game, okay? okay. Yeah, you know your boy got that too. Your boy got that too. That was a little something like against CSU. Hey, you did, you did. Yeah, yeah, my sophomore year, yeah, 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 I'm talking yeah. my thing, man. Uh, I gotta pick that game. After my freshman year, you know, college just started being interested in you know who's who's male, who's this, who's that. Uh, I'll never forget, Missouri was the first school that came up and was interested. I, I was at home. Coach called me out. You know, I raced up there as quick as possible. And I'm talking to the coach, and they just, like, so into me, you know, like, you know, you this, you that. I was, you know, very happy, <coughs> excited, just to, just to even hear from them. You know, I, I always wanted to play in the SEC. Next thing you know, on my 19th birthday, I'll never forget this. They, they called me with a full right offer. I'm just juiced, like. I'm mind blown. You know, I was mumbling. I didn't know what to say. You know, after that, you know, teams just started coming. Tennessee, Maryland, mm. Oregon. That, 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 that was State. funny why you was like, uh, you raced up there when they called you. Because uh, <laughs> I'm thinking back now, it was actually commerce, bro. When they, uh, when I was there with Seth, I remember Texas a and calls called us like, Four in the morning, five in the morning. He sent us a text. I don't know if you never remember this, the but it was, coach? it was close. Yeah. It was the light skin cat. DG. Yeah, yeah, it was DG. But this wasn't the time I wasn't thinking about D two, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't know it was a D two. Yeah. All we we just all woke up. Me, you, and Hope, and like Mike all woke up to like a like five a.m. Hey, Texas A and M coach. I do remember that. I do remember he didn't say that. nothing about no commerce. <laughs> Boy, we must have all we didn't have, nobody had class at like ten or something. But we all must have blasted up there like six in the morning, That's bro. See, commerce was yeah. like, I think he said there was ready to I walk cut. out. I, I didn't cut. He didn't cut. I'm the first time they and, came up there. It's crazy how shit come back around because that's, end up, that, that's what the coach is. Right he ended up going there and winning the championship with that same coach. Uh, it, it was funny that you say that because I think Commerce came up to Sierra to, uh, to talk to JJ, but, you know, he didn't go there first. Yeah. And I remember that coach, because I was in the parking lot, he said, hey, where's the uh, where's the coach's office at? I was like, okay, I'm like, what school are you here for? And he said the same thing. I'm, I'm from Texas A&M. But he didn't say the school. The the Commerce, Commerce part. Yeah, yeah, See, that's right? how they get you. Got, that's got, how they, they get you. On. So I was like, Okay, well, coach office over there, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm up here trying to check out a few of y'all DBs." I was like, "Okay." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ain't that, ain't that. Back to back ain't to what you were saying. When, when the offers start coming in, more offers start coming in, you know, that which pushed me to even work harder. You know, my technique, my speed, everything. You know, I was eating it up on the beach. You know, me and Seth, we had, every day we had it, every day, every day, every day. Mm-hmm. You know, about two weeks before my sophomore year, you know, I got into altercation. You know, police and all these got arrested, whatever. Uh, going into my sophomore, I was a preseason All American in junior college. You know, all of JUCO, and national real, JUCO. Real quick, Jamal, you think that uh, the experience, like you think, that's kind of like oh, the the struggle getting out of Oakland is is that environment of like all all those decisions, people doing every type of thing. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Because it's like you know, yeah, I live with my mom and all, but I wanted my own. So since I wanted my own, I wanted to go take it from others. You know, so I'm like, you know, growing up in Oakland, you see a lot, you know, from drug dealing to thieving to robbery, all that. So, you know, I, I'm like, man, I need it. I'm going to go take it, you know. Got caught up. Got locked up or whatever, man. Got suspended from the team first three games. You know, I, I was man, I was sick. I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't know who I was. You know, 
finally came back on the team. First game back, pick, come return to the crib. I, I came back with a, with a with a purpose and with a chip on my shoulder. And I, and I got to really make my mark. You know, end of the season, four picks, three touchdowns. I led the team again in picks. Still no offer after the season. Zero offers. All my offers, was, they took all my offers back. You know, I'm just training hard, hard, keeping my grades up still. You know, I get my first offer in April 2014 from a D1, from a D2. I have about five D2 offers. Then uh, the University of North Dakota, which is a D1 AA, the Blue Sky Conference, they sent me on a visit. <coughs> but from the day I landed, I knew I wasn't going to that school. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right, we used to take those cool trips. We used to be taking them. Man, I'm talking about, I've never been that cold in my life. I'm about 16 too. degrees. Yeah, I'm like, too, uh, this ain't going to work. I'm right, I'll be in high school. Yeah. After that, you know, I'm like, they pressing me to commit. I'm like, no, nah, you know, I, I still got time, you know. And I, I come from, you know, I, I was getting big time schools only, you know. I just took the trip, you know, to take, to, to take it. I mean, I'm going to keep my options open. Like, yes, y'all my only offer, but. You know, I'm better than this. About two weeks after that, you know, Texas State offered me. The University of Ohio offered me. I get this random email from the University of Hawaii. It just changed my perspective on a lot of things. Like, I've never thought about going to Hawaii in general, you know. Two days later, the coach called me at 8.30 at night with an offer. I'm walking to the, well, I'm walking in my house, just unlocking my door and everything. I'm just like, I'm just like, thanks, coach. Like, you mind if I call you back tomorrow? That's how appalled I was. I didn't know what to say back, you know? Next day, you know, I meet with the homies. I tell them what my offer. I'm like, I'm about to commit. I call the coach back, commit on the spot, you know? Home, me and the homies celebrated or whatever. Next thing you know, I'm taking my first flight to the islands. i never forget when I first landed, you know? I'm like, damn, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Got there. I got there during camp. Like, it was probably like second week of camp. You know, so I might just get thrown into the, to the woods or whatever. First scrimmage, pick, PBUs, hits. But like the coaches. So at this time, quarter is like so comfortable to you. Oh, it's like second nature now. Okay. It was just like you know, this is me now. This is why I play. You know, I get there, I'm making plays and all this, but I'm like, yo, I don't know if the coach is feeling me. I'm like, shit, like you get the third game of the season, I'm still not playing. So I decided to talk to the head coach, the red shirt, because I'm not about to waste a year. I got here late, which I understand. But I'm not gonna waste a year, you know. So I took that red shirt year, uh, very serious, you know. Got bigger. I came in 171, ended up getting, getting up to 186. You know, coming as a, a red shirt junior, you know, I played here and there. They were still, you know, playing with me. As a senior, I started, you know, I started eight games. Then I tore my MCL, my meniscus, with a, which was my first injury in my career, and that pretty much, you know, that tore me apart. I didn't know how to cope with that. You know, you know, uh, getting interest from NFL teams and to getting injured, it was just like, man, it was mind blowing. You know, I just I was just lost at, at a point at that point in time. So uh, going through physical therapy, rehab, and all this, trying to bounce back, but you know, I, once I got back on the field, I wasn't me. I couldn't move how I move. You know, I got a brace on. I can't really move. So that was my real major downfall. That's when you had the pantaloons on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Cam Newton's in the brace. You was in Under Armour. Yeah. Yeah. They had that Revo Speed on. Ooh. Yeah. Well, That's sick. It was disgusting. You know, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> we had a real strict uh, equipment manager, you know. I'm not about to argue with him over yeah. equipment. Just to, for what? I'm not going to AB. JJ. No, I made the best of what I could, you know. I made shit yeah, happen. I no him. matter what, I didn't complain. <laughs> I played, you know, played my played on my number eleven, made shit happen. Played on big stages, you know. I played against the number one state number one team in the country, Ohio State, made plays versus them. I never watched that game. Played against Michigan, they was ranked number seven, played against Cal in, in Sydney, Australia, you know, that was a blessing. Played against the University of Arizona, you know, so I played against some big teams and made plays. But uh, you know, me being Man. injured, I missed five games, which was huge as a senior. So after once I graduated and everything with my BA in sociology, I had you know a little local trial with the Niners, which I killed. But long story short, you know, shit didn't work out for me. 
I, I gave it a year after football, a year after college, and you know, just said, fuck it, you know, got into mentoring and personal training, which I truly love and have a passion for right now. And what's your what's your IG? If people don't want, want personal training from you. Oh, for for L training. If you're looking for somebody to get to get you right mentally and physically, but you got to be ready for that working because. Uh, Marvel fuck with softly. So, uh, <laughs> and I, best and trainer in the day, man. Yeah, best man, trainer so in the day. You know, listen to Seth and Maul's story. I just get a real, um, you, I feel like you get in, like real Oakland, real 510. You see the perseverance. I mean, Seth could have stopped after high school once. Like, you little, you know, Maul could have had his mess ups in, 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 in Laney. I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm not going to go to four year. And, you know, and all persevered. And so that's why I want to lead next to JJ, who had a similar role. And uh, get us started when you first started playing football, JJ. Uh, well, actually, I, I've actually started playing baseball. So I was playing baseball at a young age. My uncle got me into sports. Um, Cause my mom, she, I mean, she was she was around, but she was working and stuff. So my uncle was the one who actually got me into sports and everything. But my first like memory of sports is probably uh, when I went heads up with my brother the first time ever. That was my first time ever getting smacked. Like, can you give us a rundown? I can give my brother James Tillman. He's a uh, legend. <laughs> he's one of the good, great, good, good football players for the San Leandro Crusaders. Probably one of the greatest, I, I would say. I mean, not trying to be cocker and that's just good as it is. Really, really is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 yeah, he's a good football player. But um, yeah, after that, that's when I was like, oh yeah, I got a hit. Like it ain't no games. You know what I'm saying? Cause okay, just we got these things called hog drills where you lay on our back. Um, I went, I went with him the first time. He didn't really smack me. He didn't really smack me. Oh, he, he, just, he, he just yeah, hit me. He just, he just light, lightly hit me. The coach was like, you want to go again? I'm like, come on, of course. I got to go again. He didn't, you know, it wasn't nothing. The second time, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, the second time wasn't so nice. I got up, chin strap off. Oh, how how D-Lane said the dude was when I hit him, that's how I went. I went, I went to the back of the line. I was crying. I was I was hurt. I was hurt. It was, it was a bad day for me. But, um. Yeah, that was Crusaders. We pretty much played Crusaders for all my life um, until and then after that I went to San Leandro High, where I met. I mean, I didn't meet these guys, but I played with Seth a little bit today as well. Um, I'm mad that they left because we was gonna be a good team. They yeah, went they to Mac on me, but you know, things happen for a reason. Um, I had a cool season. I mean, I had a cool years as in high school, but I was small, so I could, I didn't really get the exposure that I feel like I could have if I've had the size I have now. Um, but out of high school, I actually did get the chance to go to a D1. I was a walk-on at Sac State, but I actually was playing receiver. I was playing receiver there. Uh, I met some people. It was cool. Huh. Uh, you playing receiver? A lot of you was playing receiver at Sac State. That's what they wanted me for. That's, <laughs> what they, that's, that's crazy, though, man. And at that time, you're, you're six foot at Sac State, right? Yeah, I was six foot at Sac State. Oh, yeah, 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 I was six yeah, foot yeah, at Sac yeah. State. Yeah, yeah, they wanted me to play receiver there. I don't know. And then... Stuff happened there. I got suspended. Uh, wrong place, wrong time. Situations happened. Um, after that, I uh, took some time off. Uh, I went to this school. I mean, this school in Woodland, just to take to do school to get my grades, keep my grades right. Um, during that time, I was working out, really just hooping all the time, every day, at the gym. Um, uh, Tilly, can I cut you off and ask you a quick question? You you said wrong place, wrong time. I know Maul had the same uh, situation. What's some advice y'all give young brothers right now, like just as far as avoiding those type of situations if y'all can honestly, before you get back to your story? Honestly, for myself, I would just say, you know, even if it's your best friend, your closest homie you've been knowing your entire life, you know, you got to know, like, man, I got something big going on for myself. I can't put myself in the situation. It's bigger than you. Exactly. You know, you got you to gotta, you gotta make the right decisions, even though it, when it's tough. When the pressure on, you gotta put, still make right decisions, you know. And the me, for on. myself, I didn't do that, you know. So, I hope you young man out there making the right decisions and staying focused because it's, it's important for real. What about you, Tilly? Uh, I'm people. Um, what he's basically what he said: be be smart, do the right things. Just do basically try to do the right thing, especially if you're trying to go somewhere. If you're trying to get to a place, you can't be doing the wrong things because you're doing the wrong things. Okay. Something something gonna catch up to you. It's gonna catch up to you mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. So you gotta stay focused, stay doing the right things. Keep keep the bad things out your out your mind. Have a positive mindset, and and I mean that's all I can really say. Yeah. And I, right. I, I just want to piggyback off JJ. Funny story. So when he had a situation at Sac State, me and uh, I was at Grandview University. We got kicked off our teams or suspended the same week. <laughs> Literally the same week. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, y'all playing that shit? So, uh, I mean, no, mine mine was different. I had anger issues, yeah. so you know mine was different, but. 
Yeah. And you said, what's that? Flatness. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, after after Sac State, I um I decided to uh take to go to uh Sierra, where I played with Zay as well. We played and I lived with him as well. I don't really, we didn't really have a struggle too much. Um with that EBT. Yeah, we had EBT for sure. EBT I, I, I would suggest if you enjoy the college, you should try to get on that. Yeah, right. For it's sure, tight. for sure. Um, don't, don't take that pride. Yeah, at Sierra, um, my first year, I had a cool little season. Um, I, I didn't get no no accomplishments or anything. Um, I actually didn't start the first game. They had a, a hurt guy playing before me. Oh, and it, but this, this is a typical story. That's usually what happened for me in high school is where I had people play start over me. So I, I'm usually I'm usually looked at as a guy. At like I don't know, it was this, one of these dudes on on my team told me he thought I was gonna be a uh, what would he say? A gray shirt. A gray shirt. <laughs> he said that he was a gray shirt player when he first said. Jay Day never looked like a football player yeah. like in but shorts and no, like. It shorts. was disrespectful for me because I was mad for JJ because yeah. it was a white boy starting that safety. Yeah, started over. But you know how but no, no disrespect to them. No, no disrespect to them. Like they were no. good players as well. Yeah, yeah, you know they were good players as well. It's just you know I feel like I, I, I should have started, but it's always been like that. You killed somebody that game. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. kickoff. Yep. And then uh, so yeah, that year I had a cool year. My first year, my second year I had a, uh, I actually started, and that's when the recruiting started a little bit. I never was like highly recruited. I never had big D ones. I always had like D one double A's or or Division two schools recruiting me. Um, well, real quick, I want to ask you, Jay, why why do you think you didn't have that recruitment? Because, I mean, for anybody, you can just Google Javon Tillman. It's one of the best safety highlight tape JUCOs I've seen. You got pick sixes, you got no, kick returns, okay. big hits, coverages, sacks, forced fumbles. So why why do you think you were under-recruited? Because you had the size at this time. Yeah, that. I did have the size. I, I would say size as well, probably um, a, little size, a little bit of size because I'm still a little bit small. Okay. Um, size. Probably, I don't know, um, school I'm at, possibly yeah. recruiting. I don't know. I can't really did say you ever think about, too much, you know what I'm saying? Did you ever think about switching positions? Maybe that would have helped as far as going to corner or receiver? Um, mm-hmm. I actually started at corner at um, Sierra, but they switched me to safety. They didn't want to okay. play safety because they wanted me. And the the uh, defense actually evolved around me. Okay. So, I like, the coach, he, he uh, did everything around me. So, what? if, if yeah. wherever I was at, that's how we won. Was it was it Coach mm-hmm. Montreal or Eden? The Eden. Eden, Eden okay. did that, yeah. Eden. Montreal, he did a little bit, but... Uh, Eden was really the one who evolved it around me. Okay. Um, and Seth, and that's what I'm saying, okay. Uh, after that, Seth, that's how Seth was at his co- at Commerce as well when I went there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to get to that later. Uh, so after Sierra, uh, I went to uh, Southeast Louisiana. I actually was recruited by Southeast Louisiana and uh, North Dakota, the school that Ma um, visited. The funny story is actually the day of, of, of signing day, I was supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to go to North Dakota, but I signed to switch to uh, Southeastern the same day. And, and wasn't it because I remember you told me like whoever called me first? Yes, yeah, so yeah. it was something like something that. like that. Yeah, but did you tell North Dakota you go sign it or something yeah, like that? I, I, yes, the yeah. coach was so pissed off at JJ. <laughs> no, you talking bad about JJ. <laughs> <laughs> me and JJ, we started, started talking bad too. We started talking bad about JJ. Me, me and JJ were yeah. saying, yeah. Wait, we "Who was party? it? Yeah. It was a big what." What is it? Big West or Big Sky in North Dakota? Big, Big Sky. Sky. Big and Sky. that's like a lot of Eastern <coughs> Washington. No, 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 no. I think it was the UC Day. One of them coaches I was talking to, they was talking greasy. He was like, bro, that conference, they never could have survived. Lord yeah. conference. They, they was talking bad yeah. about yeah. that. They, they, they don't like D1AA's down here. Wow, boy. The coaches would tell you anything. Coaches talk real greasy. That's what they got, boy. And the same ones that get on Twitter talking about, don't do the negative recruiting. The same ones be talking bad about the other teams. So I'll buy you a house. Yeah. I use some money or whatever. Yeah, that's a different episode. I heard most of the truth. That, that's for a different episode because we all on the p- coaching side now, yeah. so you know we we know the politics on that side too. You feel me? Another fun, uh, another fun fact boys. as well. The coach, the, Ale- the uh, Alabama DB coach, recruited me and uh, D Lane right now. Oh, Shout yeah. out my boy Carl Scott. Carl Scott. Uh, Carl Scott. Carl Scott yeah. left us though, man. Yeah, my mom was ready to smash on him. <laughs> on me, she, she was like, "You brought my son down here. Y'all ass <laughs> leave. Hold on. What's his number? I'm like, "Mom, you're not getting that. Yeah, yeah, he got, he got to take care of his family." Wait, say that again, Jay. Your DB coach is where? He's at Alabama right now. Yeah. Alabama, yep. Uh, let me go get that GA. Uh, sh- <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I gotta talk to him. I gotta talk to him. I gotta talk to him. But um, so yeah, I had a good we, good time at South, uh, Southeastern. But um, the way it's rules and regulations with NCAA. So um, my first actually my first year at Southeastern, I got hurt. I lacerated my kidney, like Andrew Luck. Um, 
Um, I, I set out the whole season. I didn't get to play the whole season. That was that was kind of draining physically, mo- mission, uh, mentally, <laughs> mentally, 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 <laughs> physically, all of that. It was it was all that. Um, um, after that, I, I I came back the next season. I probably had one of my best seasons. I had ninety tackles, um, ninety tackles, one yeah. pick. I didn't have a lot of picks. A couple yeah. break depths. Yeah. Uh, I think I led the conference and forced fumbles as well. Talk that shit. Yeah. Um, after that, after that, uh, I, I thought I was gonna be coming back next the next season to play at Southeastern, but uh, unfortunately my clock was up, meaning I only had five years to play at uh, a D one level, so I couldn't play at Southeastern anymore, and I had to take I had to go to uh, Texas A and M Commerce and play with Seth. And like I said, when I went to Commerce, it was it was a little different. It was a little different. The defense they ran was a little, way different than what we ran there. Uh, at uh, Southeastern, so I had to adjust a little bit. Can you, can you explain the, uh, the differences in the schemes? Um, what? So more so, like they ran a two high system. Okay. We ran. We only had a, we had a three. We had three safeties, but really one high for the most part. Okay. But um, besides that, it was and, and y'all like like I said, y'all like ran I said, a lot of quarters covers over there. Uh, quarters and cover yeah. two. Okay. Yeah, okay. they they revolved the, they revolved yeah, the, the defense time. around Seth a lot. So it was just like a lot of the plays like were. For, for for set, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how you're supposed to be. When you're your best player, you make the defense around them. You know what I'm saying? You got to. So, um, and then fortunately I got hurt. I, I missed a couple. I played the, like the first five games, and then I got hurt. Had to miss some games. I know. I saw. I saw his. You hurt your knee or quad, yeah, right? Yeah. That thing was looked disgusting. He said the it to me too. Oh, like, was crazy yeah. part about that about his injury. JJ was still playing on that knee. You know how you seen it was purple, it was big. Yeah. He was still playing, mind you. He killed somebody on the sideline with that knee, though. Yeah. <laughs> still killing people. This fool kept playing with the lacerated kidney. <laughs> he went in at halftime like, man, I'm pissing. Blood. Was it halftime? No, no, I was, it was yeah, after the half, game. At halftime, I was like, I, I, uh, I can't breathe. Bro. Yeah, can't I'm like, what's, I'm thinking breathe, it's just bro. the weather. So yeah. I'm like, bro, we in Ohio. You yeah. know, we Cali niggas, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, we Cali niggas, something. Yeah. You feel me? I got asthma or something probably going on, but yeah. you good, brother. You yeah. straight. Yeah. Nigga, pissing blood. I'm like, hell. Yeah. After the game, I went to the thing. Piss and blood. Sad day. Mm. Yeah. But um, yeah, so after that I went to commerce. I had a cool season. I mean, I missed eight games with national championship. Blessed to for my last game to be a national championship. Uh especially to play with my brother as well. My brother Seth. Um now now I'm coaching at San Leandro High School and I'm a mentor as well. Man, that's I feel like it, I feel like all your stories is it's a different adversity, but y'all keep pushing. You know, it's uh and I feel like everyone need to hear that. And as far as like, you just gotta keep going. At the end of the day, keep going. That's man. what it's all about. Keep going and man. learning, and, and learn, and learn from the others before you. Learn from yeah, yeah. Learn from the other people. Like learn from our mistakes and stuff like that. Learn from Jamal mistake, like uh, getting in trouble off the field. Learn from my mistakes, uh, school wise. Learn from uh, JJ mistakes and stuff and like I that. Feel, and, and, that's and, what we and the reason I, we, you know, me and Delane chose these guests because we felt like they're from Oakland and they're doing positive things in their life now, and they each had their own adversity. You know, Seth had to overcome the classroom. Ma had to overcome, you know, the what Oakland could do to certain people. Mm-hmm. And then JJ's situation just wrong place, wrong time. You know, kinda out of your control situation. But you gotta show you gotta keep pushing. And I feel like, you know, these three gentlemen do it now. Uh all three of them are our mentors. Uh, you know, JJ, Seth, they coaching. Um, you guys gonna coach against well, each other? We, 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 yeah, we, 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 we,
really try to mimic, mimic my game off of his, you know, and just be out there, make plays, don't think, just react. React to what I see, you know. It's there, so react to it, you know. Don't, don't be hesitant. So, yeah, and uh, Coach Gardner, he was just, you know, always in my ear about just technique, technique. Mm-hmm. That was key. At, at yeah, corner, yeah. technique is key. Technique. You can be the fastest, jump the highest, be the, be the longest, but if you ain't got no feet. If you don't got no technique, it's over. It's not, you might as well just shit. hang it up, to be honest. Literally. Bro. So, yeah. Uh, for my me personally, uh, Deco, Deco just um, up up my IQ of, of the football of, yeah. of, of this football game. You yeah. know, like when he first came, the first meeting he came in, he had all them percentages, like percentage, like you all, the stats, all the stats, like yeah. what the office gonna do on this play on me on this down, uh, third and second, fourth and you know fourth, you know <coughs> stuff like that. Uh, first and uh, go, I mean first and ten, whatever. He just like. Complete game breaker. Yeah, man. complete game breaker, man. He broke the game down like like when he did that for me, it made the game so much simpler and it's like, so easy for it us made to make the play, game man. so so slower. Yeah. You feel me? It's like you could be out there like 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 I said, like Ma says, uh, being the best athlete in anything. But like if you don't know what's going on, you don't got technique, bro. You shouldn't be out there. Like you think you just out there, just be out there. But if you break the game down, really like take a hold of your craft. If this your craft, like take a hold of that thing, man. You'll go far. I have one last thing to say. And, and Garner, I'm sorry, but Garner, like, uh, piggyback off of uh, uh, Mayo, Garner, man, he, uh, like I said, technique, 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 man, uh, be better than a, be an opponent. Uh, just just encourage me, always in my ear. He was always in me, uh, my ear. Uh, one last thing to say, uh, you know, me and Steph always go at it, who better, who this, you know. I'm for he sure said, he better. said, he said, how like better than mine. I'm for surely better. My, I don't think so. I was so, for surely better at Laney. On paper, I had 10 picks in two years, I had four touchdowns. So, I mean, that says it all. You know I mean, what? I had eight. You back feel me? On, let, let, I back, had eight. I had eight. team in picks back to back years, and that was my first year playing corner. So because they kept throwing to you. They kept throwing to you a lot. It's all good. Me and Zay got the. Uh, we got we got one more question yeah, for Tilly I'm, I'm, from Zay. But hold on, me me and Zay got the head man on the show in two weeks. Coach Bean, you know we doing last chance you yeah. and uh, interview Coach Bean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank congratulations, you, man. man. So we're gonna get the real answer. We're gonna get the real answer yeah. from the yeah. head man himself. I'm gonna yeah. ask him. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah. Make sure I ask him all. Yeah. Except I was gonna ask JJ real quick. Did you have a, a coach in college that you felt helped elevate your game as far as DB? Uh, yes. Uh. Uh, Greg Williams, uh, Greg Williams' son. He he for sure he put put me on a lot of game like okay. a Blake lot of Williams. game. Like yeah, he, he's yeah. real smart with the game. You know what he's talking about. So it's just like he wasn't a good people person, but <laughs> he knew that football. He knew that football <laughs> for sure. He, he for sure put me on game for football. Um, as well as Carl Scott and Patrick Tony, that, that was my coaches like that recruited me to Southeastern Louisiana. They they for sure also put me on game with some. Like, like the stuff that you was talking about. Yeah, I didn't really know that stuff. I didn't know, that, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know the first and ten and yeah, all the yeah. percentages yeah, and all that. I didn't really like understand that, that, that until till, till those coaches put me on that. Man, I appreciate y'all coming on, man. And real quick before we go, I want to shout your social media out so people can follow you and see see the journey y'all going on. Uh, man, uh, IG Sefer, uh S three F F three E R. I mean three E R. Uh, Black Doc on Twitter. Black Doc Fall. Um, that's about it. Uh, for myself, Instagram, the number four L training. That's my Instagram. If uh, uh what, Twitter, my Twitter is Foyeo, the number four in Yeo, you know. Me, uh, Instagram, Raw Dude 6, Twitter, fast like A underscore J. There we go. Thank y'all. Appreciate well, it. Appreciate it. Y'all on the show, my brothers. Appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having us. Still went for it. Time to change the club.